Uh oh. I love that music, man. I tell you, our intro music is some of the best out there. I actually made our intern, Michael, put it on my playlist just so I could hear it more. Here's the thing, right? Every time you guys listen to this podcast, you get in here. I don't know if you're in your car. I don't know if you're out on a walk, make, taking a run. Maybe you're even uh, listen to it at work when you're not supposed to, when you're thinking about starting your own business, whatever that may be. One of the things I teach my sales guys is when you get into a sale call, right before you get there, I want you to clear your head trash. It's called just get that trash out, man. Everything that was building up before, you got to get it out. And that's why I'm hoping when you get on this podcast and listen to this, you're feeling like, hey, this is my chance to kind of decompress and get out and maybe learn a little bit of something while I'm having some fun. So clear that head trash. Let's get in there. Let's figure out what's going on. And so now you can start building, bonding, and rapporting. I just made up my own word, Alan. Here we go. Just like with every episode, we always say cheers. And today we say cheers to one of my favorite real estate agents, Mia Hanna. Hello, Thank everybody. You. Hello, Thank Mia. You. I can't. Uh, yeah. And we're back. Uh, Mia is a uh, Renaissance woman. And she is and uh, done both quite a bit. Wine snots. And we are both wine snotting. So, what are we <laughs> cheersing with today? Today, we're cheersing with Ramole Toscano 2020. Wine, blah, blah, blah. blah, With a backup of maybe an Abruzzo Piccolino, but some of us are drinking beer. Says the guy with, yeah, you're two fisted. He's two fisted with Gate City, (laughs) which is soon to be a sponsor. We're actually working on that right now. But before we jump in, one of the things we're really celebrating is this is going to be uh, we just published our 100th episode. And one of the things that we're very proud of is that now we're in the top 10% podcast. worldwide so when we've universally we've been saying you know hey we're kind of a big deal well now we're kind of a big deal yeah so funny enough uh just this morning i got uh hit up by netflix wanted to know if we wanted to do a documentary <laughs> like smartless and follow us around no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> it's like really no, sorry. not yet not yet Gullible. yeah they're <laughs> starting with this one mia so, you're gonna be on netflix <laughs> So why is Mia a renaissance woman? Mia is a renaissance woman because she uh, got into the corporate world, said, you know what? I'm getting out of the corporate world, and I'm going to go try my hand at real estate agents. And she is a realtor, which we'll talk about what realtors are versus real estate agents. And now here she is in the, I guess, third stage of her life saying, you know what I'm going to help? I'm going to help other real estate agents with their marketing. And she actually publishes the Trusted Toolboxes newsletter on the side. Her side hustle, which turning into her full hustle, is she does email newsletter marketing. So we're going to get a lot of great gold nuggets today, my friends. She's a broker, too, right? I am a broker. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That's even a bigger deal. So Mia, you got into the corporate world. Let's set that stage for a minute. What did you do in the corporate world? So I would say that my real career started um, in the, um, when I, let me see. So my real career started in the um, wholesale optical industry. And you know, you know how you take those tests when you're in high school about what you should sell or what you should do? Yeah. That's it. What you should yeah. do. Longshoreman. Yeah. We talked about that yeah. on the podcast. I actually, I heard that on one yeah. of your podcasts. So my, <laughs> I really did. <laughs> Who was it? Was it you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I went to a pretty blue collar high school. I don't think they had anything like sales or any of those fancy <laughs> they didn't jobs. That's have great. Fancy jobs. No, so that's long great. That's great. So my test came back and I was kind of tied for two different things. But the, the one that it was either be a teacher, that wasn't going to happen. It, so it was selling art. And that was what you know, that test came back and said, I needed to do Fancy. selling art. That's really specific. Well, yes and no, because really when you think about it, so when I first got into my career, I jumped around and I sold all kinds of stuff and I sold intangible products and tangible products. Huge difference. There's a huge difference. And, you know, there was a period of time where I was in the advertising industry and I sold white space. So I sold advertising space and then I sold graphic design well both of those are pretty intangible at least from the get you know in the beginning they're they're intangible and I was okay at that I was you know I kind of made a living it's a lot more fun selling a thing it really is and I didn't really take my career did not take off until I got into um, selling eyewear wholesale And I happened to work for a Austrian company called Silhouette, and they were 
it was their eyewear is you know is was and still is a piece of art um both in the way that it's made and in the and in the style they were actually they've got stuff that you can't even sell here in the united states because it's would, so fashion forward would chris look good in it drinking his wine Hello, I feel fashion forward. <laughs> she just said, she just, as soon as she said, I don't think we sell in the U.S. I'm fashion forward. I'm like, would... dude, send me that website because I am so fashion forward. As Elton I said, John glasses I, on I wear, Chris. I wear three different colors of shirts, red, white, and black. And they all say the trusted toolbox on them. So. You know when they really kind of like get made a name in the United States was when Colin Powell uh, wore his, the very first drill mount that, I mean, he was out there in front of all you know you know what a drill mount is it's the rimless frame yeah yeah i remember that and, I remember wore, his and, glasses. That was, and it was a silhouette frame those are silhouette frames. yes i remember and his glasses. that's when that company i mean really became a sought after name in the you know eyewear fashion industry and so there you were so, there I was. but you were doing so, b2b sales so you're selling to people who are selling these i was and i realized that most doctors aren't really good salespeople, right or no. are not good business people not good business people yeah, yeah, no, yeah. they're not it was very you know but i had a lot of success in it i was with them for a very long time and um you know did sales got into sales management sales training and um which sales process did they uh use with you guys we was should, it Carnegie, we should, we was should, it Sandler, we should get it? a doctor on the podcast and ask why they suck at business i you know actually as soon as she said that uh, i played golf this weekend with a doctor <laughs> <laughs> they do just suck at business they, really they do. do they want nothing to do with it no. they just want to help people and uh also let you know exactly how smart they are don't forget that part. That's I'm glad part about the help yeah. people piece, and I'm yeah. really glad that they but suck they are business really to a bad business. Yeah. Yeah. Now you know why these things are happening, but the, mm. the consolidations. You're right, though. I'm going to find somebody who's doing that. Let's do that. That'll be yeah. fun. That'll be a fun you episode. Know, actually, I think I might know somebody. You, you're actually going to write I, that down? I, uh oh, I am. Was that a good idea, Chris? Uh, okay, one. Okay. Fine, just one. All right, just one. All right, all right. <laughs> but back, back to me, shall we? All right. So, um, where were we? We were talking about eyewear. <laughs> eyewear. Yeah. Corporate. So that's, yeah, that's what So you're doing, you're selling B2B, doing all that. Yeah. And again, the, the, the sales process, uh, did, did they have a name for it or was it just their process? Um, they didn't really have a name for it, but I would say that it was very relationship. It was a relationship sell. It was very, you know, I didn't, I had, when I first started out, I had actually, when I first started out, I had a three state territory and my, my, uh, what would you call that? The, my, the round, I, it took me 12 weeks to get to through these three states. And I would leave on Monday morning and I would come back on Friday afternoon. And I, would, and I was driving. It was Alabama, Georgia, and South Carolina. What and, was your favorite state? Um, I actually had some, I had a lot of fun in uh, Alabama. Get right out of town because I would have said that would have been my worst no, 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 no. That, you there, know I'm yeah, a big fan of South a, Carolina. Me too. And that yeah. was back in my partying days too. Yeah. So, right. <laughs> so did they give there you, you any formal sales training? Do you have formal sales training? Or no. did you learn it all the hard way? Isn't that I amazing how often that happens? Really? Yeah. Yeah, I found that amazing because um, Mia hit on one thing that I think a lot of people uh, maybe can appreciate or not. But uh, as a guy who was in both sides, uh, in relational selling, that's what I did in the consulting business. A way different sales concept than what I'm doing and in the handyman business, which is more transactional. It's, and, uh, yeah, the farmer versus the hunter. Yeah, you really, right. uh, and so I think the nuances with relational is that um, longer sales cycle, number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, you, you've got to play angles and you've got to figure out things. And in today's world, which I think is even wilder, is uh, you can't, you can't, you, you can't do the shiny baubles. You can't do the, hey, man, I'll take you out to dinner. Hey, I'll take you here. I'll take you there. I'll take you. I'm trying. That's why I'm filtering myself because all the places I took people. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, so. The cheetah misses you, Whoa, Chris. Whoa, hello. Yeah. That's what I didn't want to say. But yes, yeah. anyway. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's By the way, it's, it's, the, rare. it's, it's, the, it's the, the alluvia. Gold, the, the, and the credit the gold says club. alluvia. It doesn't say alluvia. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> so, but no, back to that is that you're trying to figure out how to take a long-term play, get them to look good in their business. Um, they're probably playing up to a boss, trying to figure out how to get their C-suite to buy into what you're trying to sell. It takes a minute. And then when you're doing handyman work and what I was selling, I realized all of a sudden I went from a long transactional, a long relational cycle 
to uh, basically I was into a quickie. I mean, it was a quick transaction. It was like <clears throat> selling now or it's done. Well, and you so know, you like quickies? Exactly what I was going at. <laughs> okay, is that is that I was I, I like I like uh, faster transactions. <laughs> As long as we're talking with Mia. I think we just uh, made Mia anyway, blush. We Sorry, did. Mia. Perfect. No. I'm good. Good, good. Okay. So, yeah. So what I was about to say <laughs> was that in that 12 weeks, I would not leave an account until I made my next appointment 12 weeks later. And that was the way that I was, I was very successful in that business. Um, and, and it was because I never left an account without making my next appointment. And I've actually, that's a gold nugget. That is a really good gold nugget because then they expect you and they actually make time for you and it's not a bother. They know you're coming. My, I have a very good friend. That's my hairstylist and I have pretty much taught her that she don't let the client leave unless until they make their next appointment because think about it you've got to go to get your hair cut or whatever every four to six weeks and you just make the appointment how often do you get your hair cut well, funny Chris? enough you should say that <laughs> is that uh my hairstylist and i have an appointment uh all the time but no i th- go back to the point i think that that's so solid is that when you make your the roots appointment, are showing while you're there <clears throat> am I, it's a great temples again yeah oh, darn it um, time to frost those tips i don't so. <laughs> or coloring or maybe a little Whatever. color okay. but by making that appointment then it's in the calendar and it's there you know they can cancel but the likelihood of canceling is a lot lower if you're trying to set it up six weeks after the fact and say hey i'm coming here in six weeks nah i'm busy no 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 no, no, no. well the name of the game is making them think well if they don't fit into your schedule then you you know then you're not you may miss them on the next trip how about that i mean that's what i would do i made myself seem Scarce. Way more, yes, exactly. Way more scarce than I was. And that, that for me, that was key. How about that scarcity selling versus I can't, I got, if I don't make the sale, I'm not going to eat. Oh my God, I got to give this away. I got to give this away now. Well, I but this. I mean, think but about now. it. If you have a three state territory, you're like, if you don't catch me, then it's going to be 12 weeks later before I, before Solid. I come back around and they, you know, you, they don't, they didn't want to wait that long. But by the time I left that industry, I literally, I went from three states down to two states, down to one state. And I mean, I had half of Atlanta by the time I left that industry. Oh boy. Yeah. Why did they carve it up so much? Was it uh, competition or is it lack of? um, No, it was not competition. It was, it was what corporations do. They, 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 they want you to work harder. And so I would grow the territory and then they would bring somebody in and split the territory and then I had to work harder in the half the territory. And then, you know, and then I would build that up and then they would cut that in half again. And I had to, you know, I had to work harder to build that up so that I was making the same income. And that is why, that's the biggest reason why I left corporate America. There you go. There that's, you go. that's a big one. Yeah. What did D and Center uh, that just happened? It's amazing how often corporate America just can't get out of their own way. It's like, oh, this guy's making a lot of money, so I'm going to cut his territory. Or, they, oh, or they change a, a commission plan. Yeah, or, he had yeah, a great year, yeah. so obviously we must have misguided exactly. for our forecast. And so let's just you know raise it up by 40%. And it's like you're just killing the drive of the people that are doing a great job for you as opposed to just making right. them choke on the money that they earned. Right. I just saw an article in, uh, I think it was Entrepreneur Magazine, saying that during COVID or, or the remote uh, working process we got going right now, this guy has three jobs that are quote unquote full time, but he figured out that he could work in part time. And so he has three of these and he, he, he ended up doing 344 in a year talking about how he was able to smoke in mirrors and get. I got a buddy that is doing that with two. Yeah. So back to corporate America and the games that are played, you know, so on the other side, you grow your territory, hit your bonus. Oh, you know what? Uh, your bonus has changed. Oh, you, yeah. you grow. So we're either going to double your number. or We're going to have your size. And oh, by the way, you have to the same numbers. Boy, that's a lot of fun. Boy, just keep kicking me in the gut every time I come in here. So 
So you left. All right. So and and that's why I left because I got tired of that. I was like, I mean, they keep wanting more and more and more and more out of me, and it was getting harder and harder and, you're, and harder. And you were you were traveling every week too. Which I is was also doing a lot, and then even when I got into management, then it was on the plane. It got even bigger. But yeah, yeah. Anyway. All right. So you went to you you made the move into real estate agent. Uh, so let's talk about how you made that leap and why you did it and how you did it and did you have a plan and. I didn't have a plan. I just knew that I didn't want to travel anymore. And I loved homes and I loved relationship selling, which, you know, real estate is that. I know that it's it's also transactional, but, you know, if you work by referral, which a lot of really good real estate agents, it's by referral. It's not a it's not as much of a as a numbers game. There's nothing out there. I was you guys scared the crap out of me. Yeah. No, I'm sorry. I, I mean, I just, <laughs> both, both the two, because you're on the podcast, you can't see what's going on. We have windows. We're, we're in my uh, basement. And uh, <laughs> and, uh, and it's a gated, and I got a pool and the whole thing. And I was out there uh, two weeks ago, and I had little deer poops all over there. I'm like, what are they and doing in my backyard? you freaked here? out about the deer poop. I did. I was so disappointed in you. I know. I'm, I'm like, come on. I'm like, what are they doing? Well, because they're back there in my pool. And you I don't like, want them swimming disgusting. in my pool. Disgusting. You know, every time I see a bird get on my little ledge out there and start doing his little bird bath, I'm running like a fiend. I mean, I'm like a dog with a with a bone. I'm like, get out of my pool! You're not shooting in my pool, you damn bird! Get out of there! So yeah, I, I had deer pooping in my backyard. I was like, well, Chris, that's nature. No, not in my backyard. Maybe in my front yard, but not my back. Okay. Okay. All right. So now you know where I'm at. So. Back and to, now you uh, know yeah. why I wasn't nervous about coming on this podcast right. because of rants like that. <laughs> right. <laughs> ah! yeah, you just got to punch his buttons. <laughs> oh, you do. All right. So back to Mia, please. Oh. <laughs> so you thought we saw a bunny out the window is what you're saying. No, Actually, well, I, thought I, saw, and, I thought you guys saw no, a deer because I was about to end this podcast and I was really? going to end a deer. <laughs> what were you going to do? You, 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 gonna gonna cro- you got a crossbow or were you I, uh, just going to chase him with a I, broom? I had a bat. Okay. That's all I got. <laughs> Because I've never owned a gun. Lead pipe. I've talked about this off and off. People are like, how come you don't have a gun? I said, because, number one, uh, I don't, I, I'm just not a big fan. I don't use them. I said, number two, it would be used on me in my own home. <laughs> right. So, no fucking way. <laughs> That's why all your knives are dull in the kitchen. Exactly. <laughs> and, and, and under lock and key with two combinations. Okay. What was so, real question? estate. Yeah. What was can the we, question? Can we get back, can we back yeah. to Mia, please? Okay, oh, yeah. hey, Mia. Oh. Glad you could join us. Thank you. Oh, I, I'm sorry. What was that about again? <laughs> No, well, but I looked out the window because I always do that when I'm thinking. I look out a window. Isn't that funny? I don't know why, but I do that. I'm so back. Anyway, I was looking out the window again. Okay. All right. Guys okay. I thought All I right. saw something move, Chris. All right. No. Oh, jeez. We're gonna kill him. <laughs> okay. Uh, real estate. Um. So yeah. So I got into real estate because I liked houses. I wanted to be at home, but m- the most important reason that I got into real estate was because I wanted. I wanted to be my own boss. I mean, I'd spent a lot of time not being my own boss. And um, I just, you know, knew that I was driven and disciplined and I didn't need a boss. That's the way I was kind of So you took a bet on you. And I had had control over my income. And that, for me, that was a big deal um, at the time. So that was probably the biggest reason that I got into it. What year did you get into real estate? 2004. So four. And so for everybody backtracking, you know, eight was the beginning of the downfall. So four is the height. And uh, I think. So I you think got I re- going in party time. Huh? You got going in party time. I did get going in party time. Yeah. And, That's and, a great way to put it. I mean, she went, She got going like at 11 o'clock Saturday night at <laughs> Studio 54 right. back in the 70s, right? Because <laughs> right. we had more real estate agents. I remember hearing a stat. Uh-huh. We had more real estate agents here in Atlanta uh-huh. than the metro Atlanta of uh, the metro uh, area of L.A. At the time, same time. Yes. Yeah. Well, it was crazy really? back then. Yeah. Oh, it was. And you know, I don't know that I would have had a lot of people get uh, part of the reason that they're very nervous about going into real estate is because they weren't the your straight commission sales. And most people haven't done that in their career. And you can't, I, you can't hide. No. And I had been straight commission sales at that point for about 10 years. So it did not scare me. I wasn't nervous about it. And so that was an, another reason why I just kind of took the leap. I just, I, I remember, I'll never forget it. I was sitting at my desk and I saw this paycheck come in and I went, okay, <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. 
All right. So how'd you you get into the real estate business? I was just going to ask, do you remember your first client and thinking, God, I hope they don't realize I really don't know what I'm doing. I do. Yeah. I actually remember (laughs) that very well. And you know, there are statistics out there. Um, I can't name one off the top of my head, but there are, there are, that is a new real estate agent. That is their, that is their biggest fear is having somebody ask them, how long have you been in the industry? Mm -hmm. And, and that was absolutely my biggest fear. Um, I did not want anybody asking me that. So the very first listing presentation that I went in, oh my God. (laughs) You were talking fast. No, I was so overprepared for it. I mean, I was, I mean, if this was back before you, you know, were working with laptops and, you know, you had electronic presentations and stuff like that. And I walked in with a stack like this of. uh, of, For the listeners, three inches apart. Yeah. Of comps, of comparable sales. And I went, I, and I mean, I was showing them every, you know, everything and it was all printed in color and it was, I mean, it was the overkill was crazy. And, and what were they doing? For, they were appeasing you just going, yep. Uh-huh. uh-huh well, uh-huh. this is the interesting thing. And this was like one of my very first lessons. And it was based on a very good piece of advice that I got when I went into real estate. The piece of advice was, okay, you're just one in a million. And of real estate agents, do not cut corners, never cut corners. So of course, in this one, I didn't, I went through everything. I swear. I think my presentation was two, two hours long. Like, we'll just sign. Please <laughs> shut up. I know. Right. That, that reminds me. <laughs> if you, if you don't sign with me, I, I'm going to stay, stay, stay here all day and, and read, 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 read the entire Bible. <laughs> But, but you guys, this was, you know what? They ended up, I did not know this going into it. It was two engineers. Oh, they wanted all that. Oh, my gosh. Oh, they were lapping that data up. They, yeah. they were loved it. Doing six, and so I, 2004, they're probably using Quattro Pro. I had a sign listing <laughs> yeah. agreement when I walked out. Chris would have shot himself 20 minutes yeah, in. You would, yeah, yeah, yeah. But an engineer is perfect. Yeah, it was perfect. If there's any way I could say I'll sign now, will you shut up, please? <laughs> right. All right. Can we get a glass right. of wine now? Thank you. Right. Because yeah. that's exactly right. <laughs> and that actually spurred because I was so taken aback at that whole process that that spurred me, and and I went with Keller Williams after I'd interviewed 18 brokers. No, uh, no oh, kidding. that sounds a little obsessive. Uh, well, I was a trainer, and so I knew that I knew but also knew what I didn't know. And so I wanted to, yes, I did. It was very obsessive. And you know, I was I loved okay how with that. She, you know what? She finally gave up. She was trying to defend it, yeah. but we're in therapy right now. We're here in the small it's business like safari therapy. And she really finally admitted. She goes, yeah. But I went with Keller Williams because at the time they were known, I mean, it was all about the training yep. and they were known. Right. And also I was in, I would say that 15 out of the 18 brokers said, well, you haven't talked to that Keller Williams yet, have you? That's like, you know, multi-level, you know, drinking the Kool-Aid, you know. And and I hadn't even heard of Keller Williams. It wasn't until the last two interviews that I went to Keller Williams' offices, and I did it only because I had so many brokers going, well, you haven't gone and talked to Keller Williams. You don't want to do that. Because <laughs> How about that for an like, anti-sell? That yeah. is jealousy of the number one yeah. you know, residential I mean, seriously. real oh, wow. estate and it was all about And it was all about training, and that's why I went with them. So part you of- You know I'm a KW commercial. Oh, are you really? Yeah. Oh, I work with a couple of KW commercial agents. Mm, I do anymore. their newsletter. No, you shouldn't. Oh, you should do your, uh, oh, oh, she's look at you. She came on this podcast to sell you. Wait a minute. Whose podcast is this? Mia, you back up. I don't need no stinking newsletter. Right. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Yeah, I don't need a website. I don't, need, I, don't, I don't want clients coming to just talk to me. I, you know, I pick my clients. Okay, Alan, we do this podcast talking about how to grow your business, but he's not learning. But that's a different story. Okay. I'm a stubborn man. <laughs> All right. So you went to Keller Williams, which uh, for a lot of listeners, um, just again, in the residential world, Keller Williams has an incredible reputation of training and developing talent and, and culture and culture. Yeah. 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 Gary Keller did a great job with that. I mean, Absolutely. books. Uh, yeah. So, so you made a good pick. Uh, but I, and I, the comes, reason that I did it was the training. I yeah. mean, that was the, because I knew that I could, 
stay with them for two years and then I could go anywhere I wanted and I'd be fine. And that was the biggest reason that I did it. But with all that, and one of the things that I learned and I really went after it after that listing appointment was the disc profile. I learned that disc profile. You're okay. looking at me all confused. No, no, we no. Oh, no. Chris is a pro. huge disc guy. My, all my people in my company have been disc profiled. Okay. So but, everybody's in there. In fact, when you come into my office, which Mia's been there, I, she hasn't seen it, but I'm going to show it to her next time. Guess what Chris is? <laughs> <laughs> introverted. And I'm a pleaser. I'm yeah, an introverted you're an pleaser. You're amiable. I'm amiable. <laughs> I'm Amy amiable. <laughs> Shut the hell up, Alan. Back to me. All right. So are, the are disc you, profile. Are you an ID or a DI? I am a. I am an ID. Actually, D. you're an ID. He's just Believe it or not, D. Yeah. there's no other letter for. Yeah, no. Actually, D. I come out more ID. I actually care about people. I just don't show it much. Uh, really? So yeah. And sometimes I even care that's what people think about to me. That. That's I going back to that. That's going back to that thing that he never like gives you know compliments. I don't. <laughs> so what me is talking about is that uh, our intern Michael was in here uh, setting up the show and getting ready to get going and took some pictures and uh, Mia came in and said, Hey, I really like your newsletter, Chris. Oh, Mm. that's right. I'm plugging a new one. I've got a newsletter comes out every month. Don't forget to go out there and check out Chris and sign up for our newsletter because it's filled with really fun goodies and it's short and it's brief. As I've heard that we have to and, be brief. And you, you hurt yourself on the video this time. I did. Which is really so, fun. Yeah, you're going to love this video. It's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of video and a lot of uh, a lot of personal injury by, by Chris. So anyway, uh, it was just a twisted ankle. Not a <laughs> you know, you could be like the jackass of new newsletters. I think after all the times <laughs> we've talked about your hand clamp shooting with a nail gun, I think that should be in an upcoming newsletter. Oh, my God. I, I Write that oh, down. Oh, my God. I'm going to. Make Write it that a, a huge aside. I know this is about Mia, but no, it's got to be more about me. <laughs> so I went and volunteered for Skills USA national competition. Kids come together. They do carpentry, HVAC, welding, uh, team skills is what I was. Is that like help. punt, pass, and kick of the trades for the trades? I love it. It was, I mean, amazing. In fact, we're going to do a remote there. They actually asked us because when I was down there Monday, uh, working this a uh, couple of weeks ago, uh, I said, "Well, I have a podcast, and we do it, and it's about about small business and business ownership and." They said, well, that would be great if you would come down and do a uh, a remote for us next year because the national competition is going to be in Atlanta for three years. But I was down there on Monday, and I was ripping, cutting, sawing, and everything. The only thing I did was I dropped a half-inch piece of plywood on my toe, and uh, that nail is probably not going to make it. But every digit still was in, intact. But I was – and these guys – I was working with these guys who were shop uh, – they were shop teachers. They are 60, 70 years old. And when I was leaving, they're like, are you coming back tomorrow? Because, <laughs> I mean, I, I well, all jokes aside, I can cut some wood and I can I can do some stuff. But, uh, yeah, I had a blast. That's really cool. So Skills USA, we're going to pump this thing up. We'll talk about it, and we'll see if we can't pull that remote off. We're actually um, sending out an email to the Skills USA Georgia team uh, first to see if we can't do some stuff to help promote the trades and the skills. But, anyway... How, old, how old are the participants? They're all 18 to 21. Okay. Yeah, uh, No, I'm sorry, 16 to 21. So uh, could be in high school or, or aging up into going into college. And it was from automotive, IT, culinary, but I was focused in the uh, construction trades. So oh, that's cool. It I is, like that. It, dude, it was I so love cool. how you give back, even though, you know, I make fun of you a lot. Yeah. No, it was a lot of fun. And, yeah. and uh, I tell you what, I walked out of there uh, just uh, sore, uh, but happy. No, I'm kidding. I was, <laughs> it was back to, it's just, it's just fun, man. It's just that's fun. cool. All right. But again, we were talking about Mia, right? Is, is Mia here at the podcast or is it just us? I, don't, I, I can't remember. All right. Mia has already gunned a half a bottle of wine. No, M- I Mia, have not. Mia. I've taken two sips. Mia. Hey, don't worry. Nobody can see it on video unless you go to our YouTube or our YouTube well, shorts. I said YouTube. it, you may as well. Yeah, you might as well keep gunning. All right. So you start doing the sales. Let's go back to this. So real estate agent, um, sold your first house, got your first one under your belt, feeling good. This is four, five, six. Business is building, business is building, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. How, how good did it get? It got really good. I did, yeah. I did, I mean, I, yeah, I made, got awards six months in because remember, I knew the animal, I knew the, I knew relationship selling and I knew how important consistency was. And you use the disc profile to help you identify your clients? Absolutely. And that, that first client was the reason that, I really started to study that because, um, it, you know, it's not about what I am. It's a, what a, it's about what my, the, the person I'm trying to sell to was. 
And so that I paid real close attention to that. And so somebody like you, I would never go into a bunch of detail about, I would show you the highlights of the comps, but I would talk more. <laughs> I Just would talk big yeah. numbers, big pictures. <laughs> yeah. I My mean, head's shaking all over the place. And for I the mean, podcast, anybody folks, yeah. that's, that's no. a D on that disc profile, which is, you know, dominant driven, you know, anybody that's that, man, they don't, they Darth don't want to hear anything. They just want you to just, you know. <laughs> Here's Chris coming into the room. That's right. Oh, hi, Chris. Dun, oh, dun, hi, dun, Alan. Dun, 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 dun. That should but, be our podcast music. But funny, that should actually, was funny enough, I do have the cape. So <laughs> when I would have walked into that presentation with her with the cape on going, okay, present. <laughs> Throw the cape back. And she would have went, oh, boy. Yep. It's time to go. The disc profile, I'll go back to it again. We've talked about this quite a bit. I can't believe we haven't talked about it more, Mia. Um, it is so big because I do that to help us with our sales it's... because there's four quadrants in disc to make it simpler. And I tell my sales guys, you are in one quadrant. Here's the problem. Three quarters of the people out there are in the other three quadrants. So everybody you're going to sell, you got to figure out who they are because if you are the quickie, quick, quick, quick guy, and this person wants you to slow it way back down and give them all the details, and you're not doing that, you don't have the win. And if you have somebody who wants to win and be the high D right. who wants to flip his cape off and have you wow him and then tell him how cool he is and then give him a bottle of wine, boom, you got him, right? That's the kind of thing. So obviously Mia had been schooled in sales. Uh, now, you know it's not divided into four equal quadrants. Well, well, well I know. Well, I know I... The quadrant I'm in is the biggest of all of them, of course. It's actually the smallest. What? But it seems like the biggest because you're in it. Well, <laughs> exactly. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> it's getting deep. I, you know, I wore long pants today. You should have wore boots. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> well, look, a squirrel. <laughs> Podcast over. <laughs> All right, back to me. <laughs> See, I told her it'd be fun. She's like, I don't know if I want to do this. I'm like, come on, get on here. You're do this stuff. All right, so you're selling, you're killing it, right? Four, five, six, seven. Was it all referral? Um, Yeah. Or was it because you were following the system or what were you doing? I, I was never, the entire time I've been in real estate, I have never been one to go after for sale by owners, expireds, you know, the numbers games, yeah. the ones where you like, you know, do the robo dial and ambulance chaser. I've never been, I've never been that person. Everything I've ever done has been by referral. And, you know, which is part of the reason that I've went into the business I'm in now. But, but anyway, well, one of the, yeah, anyway, so. Um, it, so That's a huge gold nugget. We have I, some I mean, to referral, unpack. referral biz is, is I mean, it's, we talk about this over and over and over, right? You can go drop, you, you know, you're a personal injury lawyer. We had Jen Gore on, you know, she's up against the John Foy's and Morgan and Morgan's and right. the, the one call. That's all. I mean, these guys are spending not thousands of dollars. I'm talking hundreds of thousands of dollars a month just to get a client. Right. And so Mia built her book of business on networking and referring and referrals right you right. didn't advertise well, but you, so you, do you to a certain degree yeah. i mean you know because you you know when you do a good job they're going to come back to you and that's you know that's what you that's or is it the stockholm syndrome you know well it's because i'm not involved uh <laughs> as and so that's what's going on in my company too right now is while i was out volunteering um i got my operations manager is going on vacation for a week. Then my schedule is going on vacation for a week. And she is absolutely shitting her pants that I'm going to get involved again. Uh -oh. And so she is trying to tell me so, so much. She's like, Chris, I got this. I got it all figured out. I got this. And she's not doing it, but she's doing it. She's sending me emails about if she's got the whole two weeks all planned out just so I don't get back involved. I, that is so cool, though. <laughs> Your is business this? has grown. Deborah. To, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, but she's doing a great, but she is freaking out. I told her, I'm like, Deb, calm, calm down. You're good. I want you to go have a great time okay. with the grandkids. Uh, and I said, I promise you, I will only screw up at least three or four days. <laughs> so, but no, I'm, yeah, so what sure. we've learned here is even though you prefer quickies, you do still have to make a relationship out of it. I do. Yeah. Yeah, I do. I make a relationship okay. with All my right. folks. Yeah. yeah. Of okay. course, my team. All right, back to Mia, shall yeah. we? Oh, um, whose podcast is this? with the Small Business <laughs> Safari? Don't forget to go ahead Mia, and check out chrislawlevia.com. Open you another bottle of wine? Yes. Oh, say, my I God. I think I'll take my third sip There now. we go. Yeah, please. Third <laughs> sip, she sip. says. Hmm. Don't worry. The Uber driver's would, outside. We, we, call, we actually called her a car service. I think it means. We called her a car service. So it's good. Oh. We, we're we're going to get her hammered. It's over. <laughs> That's this good. Is, you know, best business ever done? Right. Over wine. 
Okay. Now, back to killing it. I think all of our best ideas over. Well, that's why we're doing this podcast. That's exactly right. Because yeah. we are geniuses after 12 beers. Going after <clears throat> that's how the podcast started, Mia. Wow. Just <laughs> over a lot of beer. <laughs> We thought we were relatively Shocker. smart and amusing <laughs> and charming, and uh, and had a lot of a lot of stuff to offer people. That's right. That's because we thought back. we were really smart, especially at one thirty in the morning, mm. when uh, the when the bartenderess is saying, "Boys, uh, last call, time to go." Oh, yep. Yeah. That was before COVID. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know right. So over. Oh, COVID. Okay, so. back to Mia. So killing it, six, seven. All Didn't, referral. All Pretty good awesome. referral business. Oh, did a great God. job. And uh, I have seen Mia in action. She does an incredible job. Um, but it's hard to se- to separate yourself from the others. You know, you got to do that with good referral repeat business. Right. So here comes 2008. We're in Atlanta, the most saturated real estate market in the nation, I think, at that point. That's another stat. That that one, you know what? Check me. I don't care. This, the most number one saturated real estate agent market in the nation was Atlanta. Atlanta, it, it, because and, of the house, we didn't and, have that many houses. And you and I mean, again, I did not come prepared to, you know, quote stats, but it was amazing the number of agents that dropped out. I mean, I survived two thousand eight, two thousand eleven, but not gracefully. Mm-hmm. I mean, it there was nothing graceful about that, and um, you know, most age. Well, I mean, think about the attrition rate and. Most agents don't make it past two years. 80% of agents drop out after two years. I mean, that's a known stat. And, um, you know, I'd been at it at that point. I'd been in it for four years. But I knew just enough to be tenacious. So um, so what did you fall back on? I mean, obviously, 2008, and, and I don't care what business you're in, it was, just, it was just flipping tough, man. I mean, I started my business then, so I was starting at the bottom. Uh, it was rough, but you had been up, you were high. And it, so what did you rely on? G- give us some, because we're looking at a recession coming again. What did you rely on? What would you tell people? This is what got me through there. This sounds like a plug. Marketing. Hello. I uh, 100% agree. Yeah. This was, wasn't was, a was that a setup? No, it wasn't actually. No, but actually, it doesn't, it yeah. seems disingenuous, Chris. No, no. Uh, <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> I seem just you render. You like that word? That's a big word. It is a big word. That's a lot, like, that lot is of a, syllables. That's an that SAT one. word right no, there. That's a 10 cent word. It was marketing. Had, that was when I, I figured out that I was going to have to pay somebody to do my marketing because marketing didn't. It, marketing is not what brought the business in, which is why I did it not so gracefully for those couple of years. Marketing doesn't bring the business in, but it gives you the opportunity to lead generate when, when that presents itself. You have to market to have the opportunity to lead generate. So I... I'm not sure I'm following that. Unpack that for me. Okay. All right, here we go. Yeah. Unpack. You, you have to have... That doesn't count by... That's a corporate big, word. That's a corporate word. All right, so I don't... Where did, I, where did I miss here? How did I... So, you said, I'm not making money, but I'm going to go pay people to help no, me make money. she's saying marketing didn't bring in the leads. No. Well, because there were no leads coming in then. <laughs> Think about it. Well, they say 50% of your marketing dollars are wasted. Well, you just don't know which 50%. I ended up, in 2008, I, it was a bigger well, percentage listen, than that. I ended up, you know what? I, I, I supported myself by learning the short sale market. That's how I supported myself during that period of time. All right, there's the big T right there. That's yeah. tenacious. Yeah, you, you, I mean, you got to go with the flow. And so I learned how to do short sales. And again, I learned how to do it very well. And I did that. But in the meantime, I knew that that wasn't going to stick. It couldn't stick. So I also started to do regular marketing to my referral base, to the people that I was doing short, you know, did you just? No, no, he spilled computer? wine all over the uh, control board. Don't worry. It's. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Don't worry about it. God, I it's was in okay. the middle of a really good point, too. <laughs> I w- and I was writing the things down, and I shouldn't be writing. I should just be listening. I was writing it because th- I, okay. I thought it was good. All right. Okay. Are what we was back? I saying again? <gasps> I want squirrel. So you were you were kind of 
getting what you originally said that I was I, I didn't understand was you were marketing, but that wasn't for leads. <laughs> no. So, OK, so you've heard the saying since you're a commercial real estate agent, you've heard the saying that when you get into the business of real estate, you are actually getting into the business of lead generation. Hmm. That's right. You've heard that. Sure. Sure. Uh, uh, really. That's right. You're a commercial real estate agent. Never mind. No. no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no. I, I won't tell you what just went through my mind, but go okay. ahead. <laughs> Can you tell me? <laughs> Later. Okay, thank you. <laughs> no. It, I mean, really. <laughs> I'm really glad this isn't. Okay. Don't worry. It's not. We'll edit it you, all We're going to edit this okay, all out. Okay. Nobody's going to hear any of this. No. Uh, or all of it. It doesn't matter. Okay. okay. Here we go. Okay. So, so the, the reason that you want to do marketing is so that, you know, as a real estate agent, you are not going to have the opportunity to sell anybody until they're ready to sell to buy or sell. That's when you start the lead generation piece of it. Mm. So marketing is keeping your name in front so of them. So brand awareness marketing is what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Got yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. Which I started, I had never really done it before when I was, you know, 2004 to 2008, actually probably 2004 to about 2010 or, or nine or 10. I, you know, I was just, you know, relying on my relationships, but, and then I learned the short sale market and that was bringing money in, but I realized that at some point that would stop and I needed to be able to fall back on my relationships. And the only reason that I was going to be able to fall back on that is because I was marketing and keeping my name in front of people. And I was so busy lead generating for short sales that I did not, um, I wasn't doing any marketing. So, you know, when that was over, I was going to be a forgotten brand. Mm. And so I started, and I was too busy. And so I started paying somebody to do my marketing for me. So she's making less money, uh -huh. but yet putting more money into marketing. And that marketing. was not easy. That's not easy. And no. as she said, not graceful. It's, it's hard, man. Yeah. And I tell you, yeah. you know, as we're uh, here, here we are in 23, looking at somewhat of a recession and a pullback, depending on the market you're in and what's going on. And I'm starting to see it, but I, I saw it at the beginning of the year and I leaned into it. Uh, so I increased my advertising, increased my marketing, um, my, my net's up. And then up, look at you. And, and right. so I'm staying up, but I'm starting to see it. I mean, it's just, it can only last for so long. So I'm back to tenacity. I'm trying to figure out the next thing. So I think that's the, the key thing is, when the going gets tough, are you the tough or is it time to go? And that's where, and especially in real estate agents, you know, you, when you're a realtor and you've been through the licensing and you've done all this stuff, you're, you're in it to win it. You're actually not just playing at this. You're actually in it to make it work. And that's a key thing, you know, back to licensing and getting into it. But I want to get that far. I want to go back to the marketing thing because that's how you found this next niche. Here we are now. So you make it through there. And then here we go. The run up begins. So I've been an agent for 19 years. And so um, about six years. So I was I started paying somebody to do my own marketing again, probably about 2010. And then all of a sudden, I guess, let me see, that was probably about 2017, 2018. I started paying attention to what that was getting me. And Yes, it was keeping my name, it, you know, name in front of me. And there is a, there's a, a line of thinking that it doesn't matter, you know, if you send a postcard, it doesn't matter if they put it directly into the trash can. They see your name going As into the trash can. As they're throwing it away. Right. And it's the same, and it's the same thing. And actually. Write that down, Chris. Well, I got one for you. And it's the same thing like, you know, with email. It doesn't matter if they just, if they delete the email, they open it. Look at it. They see your name. That's interesting. That's marketing. That's marketing. And, but, and we're so, talking about this because we're going to, we're talking about the newsletter stuff now and the marketing stuff. Right. And she's, right. she's learning it. And that's why I want to pivot to the next step because we got about 10 more minutes. So we get into this. Okay. I know it's flying. I know. Right. Squirrel. All right. Go. So, so <laughs> there's a deer pooping in your pool right now, Chris. Uh, podcast pause. <laughs> Give me my gun. He looked, you said you didn't have a gun. <laughs> So, 
marketing is that's how you keep your name in front of people so yeah. that and and you know I again ungracefully made it through 2008 2011 but then 2012 2013 all of that hit and I mean I've had best years ever and I have you know had a upward trajectory ever since because I continued to do the marketing but I did realize that it wasn't just about marketing it was important what I was putting in front of people um, because the some of the marketing that I had was very frivolous and it was it you know like you dunking on a basketball or yeah. whoa, whoa, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa 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 um, not only can I not dunk but in that video which you guys are gonna have to check out um, I had to uh, I actually had to put um, a bunch of foam pads down because I was afraid I was gonna kill Did myself. you really? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. But I was, I was, I was like, oh my god, you know, back in the day, I, literally, I, I dunked a ball like twice in my life uh, as a six-two basketball player. Just could never do it. I'm mm. play man can't jump. This guy, but playing football, I finally got big enough and could jump enough. I did, but so, <laughs> but back to his point. <laughs> to his point is, I'm making stupid videos that people like to watch, Alan. That's why but it's top ten percent, Chris. Marketing, marketing that's baby. That's marketing. You so want to figure this out? That's why people are listening. You know, to when their their house floods, they're gonna, you know, well, maybe not when their house floods, but you know, when something breaks yeah. in their house, they're gonna remember that stupid video. So I, I I've actually <clears throat> through this podcast have a, a number of people reach out to me. A lot of them, uh, handyman, remodelers, because because that's obviously where I'm coming from. Uh, knife sharpener. Um, uh, carpet cleaners, uh, and they all ask, you know, like, what's the easiest way to get into it? I'm like, you have a, you have a, you have a customer list. Yeah. I said, email marketing every week, every month, that, every month. You got to do it once a month. I said, that's the cheapest form. And if you got to pay somebody to do it, the cheapest form of getting in front of you because it pays dividends in spades and it pays over and over and over. And that's why Mia has been doing my newsletter now for about two years, I think two. Yeah. And I would tell you before then, um, I, I still tell the story is that I, I said this in a networking group once and, I, and somebody asked me and I said, oh, it's email networking. You got to keep email. And they went, how, how often do you do it? I said, oh, I do it once a month. So I went back and uh, by that, at that point, it was just me and Cindy in the office. I looked, uh, I hadn't sent an email out in uh, eight months. <laughs> I was like, uh-oh, uh, yeah. And so immediately I got on it. So I did it by myself, did it by myself. Then I took one of my internal guys, tried it. Mm, didn't do it. Mia says, Hey, l let me help you with my newsletter with, with, with your newsletter. Let me think about the format, the way you're doing it, you know? And, and the guy who was helping me internally was at the time, my sales manager who, uh, you know, loved him, liked, liked the way he did it. She goes, let me do this. Let me do this. Let me do that. Hey, let's add a video to it. Bingo, bango, bongo. Right now our open rate in our industry is supposed to be 22%. And our open rate is what? Uh, there's months where it's up close to 60%. Yeah. How about that? Bingo, That's, bango, bongo, Chris. I did it again, baby. Yeah, you did. Let's Two go. podcasts in a row. So I will say, <laughs> so when you outsource your marketing, especially social media, the big <sighs> clunk that I feel is that person who's doing your marketing doesn't understand the business. And so whatever's coming out from the business just doesn't feel right. And I will say, credit to you, when I get... Chris's newsletter, it seems like it's coming from Chris. And that is one of my goals always. Yeah. And that's a yeah. big deal. Yeah. Because there's a lot of people out there that'll and handle your marketing. And, and it his just, video it's, goes a long way towards that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's important to, and you know, all the, the main, the main, you know, in touch plus marketing is the name of my business and, and my main. Say it again. Touch plus marketing. Okay. We're going to put that in the show notes. Touch, touch plus marketing. marketing. And guess what? It's touch can we make plus it? Yeah. Can I tell you why I named it that? Yeah. Okay. So um, you can take one of my newsletters, my real estate newsletters, and you can turn it into 10 touches. You can take all these different articles that I put in it and, and create, you can put, do a social media post. You can send out another email. You can print out. A PDF and write a note on it and send it through the mail. There's so many different things that you can do with this kind of newsletter that that's why I call it touch plus. Marketing. Hence touch it's, plus. It's I think just, we should do it again. It's one more, more time. than one touch. Touch plus marketing. I like that. 
<laughs> we are the four horsemen <laughs> <laughs> of the apocalypse. <laughs> that's right, baby. But that's what marketing is. The apocalypse. Here we go. No, I'm kidding. Back to this. So uh, obviously pivoting, you're, 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 you're in the real estate business. You still do this, but now you're doing the newsletter for people because you're helping other agents realizing that while we're going through another downturn and it, you've got to be better than Absolutely. your competition. Because and it's funny. And I swear in the last week I have had, um, I've had, uh, I've signed up seven agents. Oh my God. In the last week alone. In the last week. And the reason is that we're going into a time in the market where you've really got to, it's all about marketing because yeah, there may be a slowdown, but you just keep your name out there and you keep going. There's still business. <laughs> so why did, why do you think your emails are better than somebody else? Like, you know what, uh, you know me, I'll do it myself. And, and I've heard this all the time, you know, you know, Chris, I've, I, you know, I've, I've YouTube this and I know how to change my own toilet out so I can do it myself. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. So why are your marketing emails so much better? What, what is your unique selling proposition? Uh, well, it's kind of a threefold thing. Um, well, kind of. So it is that, first of all, I am an agent, have been an agent for 19 years. I understand the beast. I understand what needs to be said. Second, my focus is putting something in there for everybody. There can be, it, that newsletter is going to appeal to some, you know, somebody that's actually thinking about selling their home, it's going, it can appeal to an 18 year old living at home in the basement. Um, and then it's, I know one of those, not, not, <laughs> sorry, 20, 24 year old, not the basement, but uh, we talked about her, but I mean, but it's consistent. It's, it's a consistent touch no, yep. that my agents don't have to touch. I, it's a turnkey service. Yours is turnkey. Yeah, no. Okay, it's, now uh, you do amazing. a video, but I have a lot of other businesses at this point that don't. In fact, you're the only one that really does a video consistently for me. Everybody else, they just rely on me to do it. I send it to them a day or two before it needs to go out and say, hey, approve this. And they approve it. They don't have to touch it. This is where and I And that's think, a big deal. That's the big thing is Touchless. That, touch it, plus. Touch it's oh, touchless touch I need plus. to like I need to figure that out. touch it. less there's touch something there isn't there buy less. there's something yeah, there I know. touch me less touch <laughs> wait where, where are we going okay, with this Chris. I mean okay, back to the quickie I'm not back to the cheetah I mean I mean <laughs> alluvia alluvia allegedly okay thank you all right back to this uh one of the things and I, I don't want to make this a shameless plug but I will um that I've enjoyed about what Mia does and brings to the table in our newsletter is that it's not Hey, come see me, the Trusted Toolbox. We'll fix your wood rod. Hey, come see me. We can do this. It is, hey, have you ever seen what a man cave can look like when you do it like this? Have you ever done a family room that allows everybody to enjoy it? Have you ever done a mud room? And look at these ideas you can get. And you're giving people ideas in their house, and you're actually giving them value and reasons to actually click on the email. Oh, my gosh, this is cool. And it's always in the subject line. And it's not, it, the, the whole newsletter is not about Chris. It's about idea. Really? It's How did you talk a, him into that? That hurt. The trusted toolbox. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Chris talks about, okay. So, no, it's about the different, you know, it's about, it gives them ideas. So that's, you know, it makes, it makes you a relevant resource. So here, here's my Renaissance woman. I started that in the beginning, right? So she gets out. Uh, she is, she's, uh, she didn't say it on the podcast, but she has told us before she is not an army brat. She is an air force angel. Thank you. <laughs> and she got into corporate America, did her thing, gets into real estate, weathers the storm in eight to 11, because, uh, and as she said, it's really more like nine to 11, but it was tough and she chose the tenacity and now is pivoting yet again for that quote unquote retirement. But I want to get out of it, but you know, I want to write these newsletters. So. Being a real estate agent is 24 seven and I don't, I'm, I'm done with 24 seven. Yeah, residential, your weekends are 24 seven. So I'm now into a, 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 I created this so that I could take my computer and go on the road. And she went on the road last year too. I did. Where? I went to Puerto Rico. Hello, Puerto Rico. Mm. And, I, I, and I rented a place on the beach. What was that, Chris? For three weeks. On the beach. At the beach, oh! <laughs> <laughs> That's my Spanish show. I know it's La Playa, but it doesn't matter. All right, back to the... Okay. So back to, you know, being able to scale and pivot, you know, over your career and your, right. your course. I mean, obviously, 
this is not the course you had plotted out when 18 mm-hmm. when you said oh boy it looks like i'm supposed to be selling art uh and then i'm sure you had that just for a glimmer of a minute you thought i'm going to france and i'm selling all the yeah, louvre's right. art or the uh, what's that called the place over there louvre dad yeah, whatever yeah yeah <laughs> you you want to talk about the louvre you want to know how, if i went there if uh you know how fast i go through that thing probably right i got i got 45 minutes <laughs> I think I could do it under an hour, <laughs> but I'll see it all. Hey, I want to see it. Don't get me wrong. I love. I, I enjoy it. It embraces me. Anyway, back to uh, Mia. Shall we? Uh, I got a. I got a story about the British Museum in forty-five minutes, but I'll tell you some other time. <laughs> so, did you work when you were in Puerto Rico? I did. Okay. With her laptop, doing With her email laptop. marketing, and that's that was and so produced Chris, when you're and was produced my, my when she you're, produced my email from Puerto Rico. I know the only reason I knew it is because you were in Acapulco. I <laughs> and you weren't working. I well, I wasn't, but she no, was. Uh, yeah. It's just an interesting uh, comparison. Just wanted to point that out. <laughs> Wait till you hear about July, mm. Alan. It's going to get really good. Okay, it's right around the corner. Oh yeah, we're going to end the uh, podcast w- uh, with that one. So, what's the exit strategy for you? Oh, my exit strategy from yeah. So that okay, that goes into the book. I know one of your questions is. What is uh, the book that had one of the biggest impacts on me? Can Let's I get just into go it. Let's we'll just do it. Just, so Hit the there? book. Recommend the book. book. Go. Okay. So um, it's Robert Kiyakowski's, uh The Cash Flow Quadrant. Mm. That had a big that's impact a on me. Rich Dad, Poor Dad yes, guy, right? Yes, that's Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And, um, and he talks <laughs> You're laughing of, at me, Chris. <laughs> why? R- Richard, Richard wants to put that. He said, can you uh, endorse my next book in the inside jacket? <laughs> oh, you're the Rich Guy, Poor Dad guy. Okay. Okay. We're going to see if we can't get Richard on. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. I actually, I, I actually have a shot. Long story. What? Uh, oh. Yeah. Okay. So anyway. <laughs> you guys are both shocked. That make us in the top I know people. 8%. I know people. Okay. Yeah. I know people. So on the left Thank side you. of the quad, you really want to be on the right side of the quadrant to have an exit strategy. And so at real estate agents are actually still on the left side. It's employee and self-employed is on the left side. The right side is business owner and investor. Mm-hmm. So right now I'm a business owner, but that will turn me into investor. I will either just sit back at the beach and, you know, be the CEO up here and let other people run my business, which is I, I, who knows what I'm going to end up doing with it or I'll sell it. I'll do one of the two. I'm not sure which, but I'm mm. building something that I'm going to be able to sell, I, sell in the email yeah. business. Will you be able to sell uh, or move over your book of business on the real estate side? I'm just, I was interested in that. That was one question I had for you before we left. Am I going to, I will You're with your real estate business. I'm going to be, I will. In fact, I've already started. I'm referring a lot of it out. I refer. Okay. Yeah. But you, will, will, will it be a tangible asset for you to sell? Is it, no, or is it no, because back? I didn't build that. See, I could have built it and I could have flipped over to the right side of that quadrant as a real estate agent. I could have built a team and done that, but my passion just wasn't there. I didn't. That's, I, th- I think that's, that's a great book. And it's also a great point because, you know, as you built a real estate yeah. business, um, you you built it for you. And it, right. but it's un- un- unfortunately, it's not going to be able to be sold. However, the email marketing that's touch plus or touchless touch plus <laughs> marketing wow hey, touch plus by the way touch you ever, plus if you ever marketing. want him to work on your jingles just don't <laughs> all right so a <laughs> couple more beers i got it okay here we're gonna we're gonna do this all right let's keep jump, jumping through these questions shall we your let's. favorite feature of your house i think i know what it is too i bet you don't oh look at that look all right it's a showdown it the is Corral. it's like two it gunslingers <laughs> they, they're both squinting at each other. <laughs> whistle for me. Do, 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 do. Yeah. I can't get whistle. I, can't. You, right. I bet you think it's my kitchen. You did. Uh, you did. You did. Shit. Which it's actually, that's probably my second favorite one. Because I love wah, to cook. Wah. I'm a big cook. Um, but it's actually my bedroom and, and my bath. My bedroom and bath. I love my bedroom and bath. There you go. It's got... It's gorgeous. It's got sun coming in the windows. It's beautiful. And it's like the only place that I can go into my whole house and get away from work. That's right. Because you do work out of your house. All right. I like that. Yeah. Okay. I did. You're and right. I thought I had read, it. Get away from you. Wait a minute. I'm not in. I'm not there. No, your work. <laughs> oh, the work. Yeah. The work. My work? No, the work. Your work. I do. But 
I, I, Never er, mind. Everybody's my work, please. <laughs> everybody's here for me. Thank you. And you can't get away from me in your bedroom. What? No, come on. Let's keep going. All right. Back to you, Mia, please. Can we? All right. Let's. So if you're a customer and you're out there and you're in the marketplace, what is a customer service pet peeve of yours? Rudeness. Rudeness. And there is a, it is amazing to me how many people in customer service are just flat out rude. And it's more than likely because they don't like their job. That is not my problem. I am a customer. Do not do that to me. So do you blame the person? Or do you blame the process and the company and the culture? Because, and that's a leading question. I realize I just said like that. <laughs> yeah. so the answer, I, I don't blame them. It's the dumbass who put the rude person in that position. Yeah. Unfortunately, I just went to the dentist I've been going to for 22 years. Right. And I've got to, I got to get some work done. And uh, <clears throat> I went in just to get my teeth cleaned before the work. And the lady's like, I can't clean your teeth without us doing x-rays. And I'm like, nope, not doing that because I got to get this other work done. I'll do the x-rays next time because I can't stand getting x-rays. Uh, longer story there. And she goes, well, then I'll lose my license. I'm like, okay, that's bullshit. So I'm like, where are we at? She goes, well, we'll have to reschedule. I'm like, that's fine. I get up, walked out. Told the ladies, I'm going to cancel my appointment. I'll, I'm out. And she goes, is everything all right? And I was like, nope, not at all. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and I'm no, moving that, on to another see, dentist. And that's, it's not her fault, though. I don't blame her. I'm actually not mad at her. I'm just mad at the way my dentist built her practice to do this. And now I'm going to go meet my dentist at her new practice and let her know that she kind of blew it on the business side. I have a really great dentist in Duluth, just so you know. My dentist oh. will beat up your dentist. Whoa. To. All right. Well, I have to talk because this is it's important because... Uh, and I'm, I gotta, I'm, I'm, a de- I'm one of those people that that's like probably my biggest fear you, is you dentist. you anti-dentite. I, yeah. Well, I go every three months. And here we go. Now we're talking about this. <laughs> you know, in the small business part, you just don't know what you're going to get. But you keep listening because you're just not sure what he's going to say next. <laughs> You know, it's watching a car wreck. Oh, my God. It's just so bad. It just keeps going over and over and over. Okay. So, next question. And I think we're at the end. Give us a DIY nightmare story. Oh, this is good. Did I get to the end? Yeah, you did. Yeah. Thank you. We're on D. I know. Thank you. I I have four questions. A, one, two, four, seven. So, the the one thing I do want to say about this is that I, I don't do DIY. Never, ever. I'm, I've never done that. I've been, you know, that tiara I had when I came in. That's pretty much the way I am and about it's DIY. it's going to be back on your head shortly. I know. We're I'm almost over. It's it. almost over. But I did have this one situation. <laughs> I used to be quite the um, party giver. Um, I had parties at my house all the time. And I always did, like, one of my biggest bashes was my Christmas party. And the day before my Christmas party... Um, I, like, I noticed that the toilet in the, in the downstairs, you know, in my main area was really slow to drain and it was like, what's wrong with that? So what did I do? I went, well, that's not going to work. So I put Drano down the toilet. Uh oh, <laughs> what does that do, Chris? Uh, Danger, Will Robertson. Danger, Will Robertson. That's an old timey reference from a long time ago. That's lo- uh, <laughs> lost in space. Oh, lost in space. Oh, Remember he knows that? It. <laughs> oh my God! You do not put Drano down the toilet, my friends. Because why? Did it? Oh. Why? Oh. What does it do? Did you flush it? Does it blow up? It does. It does. Re- Are you serious? Okay. Yes. All Never right. put Drano down a toilet, I'm my do friends. Do that tonight, friends. Or... Friends, don't ever put Drano down yeah. the toilet. There's a plunger for a reason. Toilets even, are made for a but different... Even the Drano. plunger, I tried the plunger, it wasn't working. It was slow. It was just slow. It, so anyway, so what happens up. is no, I, what, I had to wash all my table linens yes. for this party. I it's mean, not, I'm, it's seriously. Not inst- it's I not had, instant combustion. You have to flush it and then it blows. I had like 75 yeah. people coming over to my house the next day. I, I started my washing machine and everything started coming out oh every my God. any water she had a clog on the main she had this a clog is on the main, yeah. best. on on the main floor this is a good one this the is great day huh? before my party it so, was horrific are you saying and this is for christmas merry christmas hey <laughs> so if there was it. somebody who wasn't like my favorite and i got invited to a party and i brought some drano 
and I stuck it down their toilet, and they didn't know. Would it blow up? If it's flowing, it would not blow up. But okay. if it does not, it, it will come flowing. right back at you. Well, you guys haven't right. heard. You have not heard the best part yet. Oh, yeah. Oh, let's continue, shall we? So it was. I was on a septic tank. I was in Vinings at the time. That's where I lived in Vinings. I was on a septic tank, and. <laughs> <laughs> Are you serious? This is, I don't know. This how is do we why not I'm know not this? DIY. People. How do we not know so, this? Call so, me. So I finally, you know, got desperate. I was like, okay. So I call the emergency plumber and he comes over and they're like, where's the septic tank? I had no idea where the septic tank was. They started digging. My, It was five feet from my front door. Your okay? septic tank? Yeah. Oh, it gets better. Hold on. So... Uh, yeah, it was five feet from my front door. So, you know, that looks like a big, you know, uh, funeral plot. I mean, it, it does. I mean, it's the shape and everything. It is. That's yeah, exactly right. Yeah. That's, where you, you, that's where you bury your dead and your shit. Yeah, so they bur- and so we're, it's two o'clock in the morning. Now, I want you to know that I lived in a duplex. I lived in this really, really cool place. Do you remember um, the ski hill in Vinings? No. That was back, way back in the party day. Yeah, that's yeah. before your time. So I, I I lived in a duplex, and I had these three girls living next to me. Now, I want you to know, before I tell you this, that I had only been in this place for six months. And the septic tank's on my side. They dig it up. It's 2 a.m. in the morning, and the guy comes into the door, and he goes, um, Ma'am, can you come out here and look at the septic tank? I just need to show you this. And I go out there. <laughs> Should Chris, I say this? Go ahead. Yeah, please say Should it. I already, say it? I already know go. what's going. I know what's coming. Go ahead. Go. The whole top layer was condoms. Ooh, were you expecting wrong. that, Chris? <laughs> no, I was using the T word. I was going tampons. No, it was condoms. The whole <laughs> top <laughs> layer was Whoops. condoms. Didn't know that. No, I was actually. And he was tampons. like, uh, "You're not supposed to do this." And I'm like. I, I, oh, so I, he was thinking they were yours? Yes, he thought <laughs> they were mine. So he's looking at you, hey, ma'am. And wow. then he's thinking, hey, do I got a chance? Uh, not a chance there, plumber crap. But okay. All right, there you go. There's the DIY nightmare story. That one is classic. And now we've all learned something else. Never put Drano down a toilet. Alan, we'll talk after we get off Can this podcast. Can you like, take that last part out when you like edit this? Sure. Oh, yeah. We'll, yeah. we'll edit it any way right. you want. Mia Hanna, you've been an incredible guest. <laughs> Touch Plus Marketing. <laughs> this is marketing at its finest because what today's marketing is all about is being different in the world. And right now, you just got different. If you <laughs> yeah. stayed this oh, long yeah. on this podcast, you got some different shit, man, fuckers. <laughs> we got to go. I think you got a new idea for your next video for your newsletter. Though. I have no exactly. Do you have uh, condoms all I, over the top I, of your I, septic tank? You Call do, Chris. Call Chris. Yes. Boom. <laughs> Drano blowing up in your eye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We've had a lot of fun, Mia. We are going to put this all over the show notes, but marketing, marketing, marketing people, you picked up something, great arc. If you're trying to grow your business and keep going, look, you've got a couple different ways you can go it, right? You can go corporate America and you can work for the man and they keep cutting you in half, cutting you in half. You can go out there and take that chance and bet on yourself. And guess what? It's not always easy. That's what we just heard. But you know what you can keep doing? Stick to it. Be tenacious. 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 Because I was thinking tampon. That's my problem. Oh, I'm Jesus. stuck in my head. So I couldn't. I, I, I would so not have said that. Okay. Well, I would have. But I, uh, well, obviously I, mean, I did. You were uh, clearly. You were to- yeah. Hey, I got a video for you. All right. Stay tenacious. Keep going. Let's get up that mountaintop and let's make it happen, everybody. We're oh, out of here. We got to go. Cheers. Cheers.